in a mid-2014 article at greentransportation.info, David Heron speaks bluntly about EV economics. To quote Heron, it's all well and good to buy an electric vehicle to save the planet or because it's the latest cool thing. But what about your pocketbook? Unfortunately, at the moment, electric vehicles cost more to purchase than equivalent gasoline or diesel powered ones. Altruism only goes so far, and many people are unwilling to spend much more to purchase a different vehicle just because it's cleaner. You can argue that this is short-sighted because we all need to take strong action to avert various crises. But these people have a valid point about the economics of the situation. That leads to a fundamental question. Is it possible to economically justify the purchase of an EV? The answer is yes, although a variety of factors influence the size of the economic benefit. In this mini course, we'll talk about some of the basics that help you to understand how to evaluate the economics of EVs. In part two, we'll consider the quantitative aspects of economic analysis in a bit more detail. It is true that EV buyers pay a premium for their automobiles. On average, an EV costs between ten and twenty thousand dollars more than an equivalent ICE vehicle. A PHEV can cost as much as fifteen thousand dollars more. The chart on your screen represents the cost of an equi equivalent ICE car in blue and the EV premium in yellow. Most of the cost of the premium can be attributed to the relatively high cost of batteries, although other market factors also come into play. But many argue the EV cost premium can be offset by the long-term cost savings associated with owning an EV. But is the offset real? That depends on a number of factors. The length of ownership, will you own the car for three years or 10. Obviously, the longer you own, the bigger any accumulated annual savings will be. The cost of gas and electricity during the term of ownership. Gas prices can and do fluctuate wildly. At the moment, gas is selling for under $3 a gallon, but six months ago, it sold for well over $3 a gallon. The cost of electricity varies significantly from state to state, but remains fairly stable over the long term. The current national average for a kilowatt hour is 9.84 cents, but some state utilities charge under 7 cents and others over 15 cents per kilowatt hour. In addition, other factors come into play. We'll consider those later in this mini course. In honesty, not every EV buyer does a detailed economic analysis. Some don't know how, others don't have an inclination to do so. In general, car purchases or leases combine quantitative analysis for some and a strong qualitative or emotional component for most. The purchase and lease of an EV is no different. At the current time, I think it's fair to state that EV buyers tend to be slightly more technical than the average car buyer and are somewhat more inclined to crunch the numbers in an effort to justify their buy decision. But I'm not sure that really matters. For many EV buyers, the qualitative component, a strong desire to see EVs happen for any number of reasons, probably outweighs quantitative arguments. Having said that, it's worth running the numbers. But what numbers do we run and how do we generate them? It's a good idea to compare the ownership costs of an EV against the ownership costs of an equivalent ICE vehicle. The pie chart on the right of your screen provides a breakdown of yearly ownership costs for an ICE vehicle that travels about 15,000 miles per year. For an ICE vehicle, the cost of fuel, the lighter purple slice, accounts for almost a quarter of the total yearly cost to own. Vehicle maintenance, the orange slice, accounts for about 8%. 
These represent opportunities for savings when EVs are considered, but more on that later. It seems obvious, but the only way you can accurately determine the savings you achieve is to compare the EV you want to an ICE vehicle that is comparable, apples to apples. The key factors are the size for both the passenger and storage capacity of the EV. Performance, that is acceleration, handling, braking, and cornering and the interior and exterior aesthetic. For some EVs or PHEVs, it's possible to compare the manufacturer's quasi-equivalent ICE model. For example, the Nissan LEAF can be compared to the Nissan Versa, the Chevy Volt to the Chevy Cruze, the Volkswagen e-Golf to the Golf itself. But for a BEV like the Tesla Model S, there is no equivalent. It's necessary to consider other comparable premium ICE vehicles such as the BMW 7 Series or the Mercedes S Series. None of the comparisons are perfect, but they don't have to be. As long as you compare apples to apples, you'll get a feel for the EV premium on one hand and the potential long-term cost savings of owning an EV on the other. In part two of this mini course, we'll consider, consider the constituent costs that comprise the overall cost of ownership for an EV.